Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for being here. I'm really happy to have such a wonderful guest and to talk today about the season two, about the first impressions. We are five days in today's day number five in the season two. And we're going to talk about all the things that we find out so far. Who I have today, my wonderful guests. Today I have here Rob2628, the barbarian. I have today here Moxia, the druid. I have today here Echo Hack, the necromancer. Rogue hey. didn't survive here. And here I am, Anna, your host and the sorceress in this season. Uh, the My wonderful guests all, I believe, reached level 100, all blasted, all really, really well-known guide writers, players, just amazing, amazing people. And uh, you guys, I'm really, really happy. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for finding the time. Prepared a bunch of a bunch of questions for you. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm happy that I can torture smart people <laughs> with my questions. So yeah, the first one, and I would start uh, with uh, the first question. I will address it to one of you. You can always jump in to any question. You can add whatever you want to add, but just to keep the flow, just to always let different people start, I will always address the question to one of you. The first question will, will Moxie will start with this question. How right now would you rate the game from one to 10? What is your, after the patch, five days we're in the season, what would you give oh. the game? And um, I am putting the notes. Just like as a total package? Yep. Maybe uh, like a 7.8? We got 7.8. Yeah, it would be uh, similar for me, around 7, I would say. I mean, the early game, I think, gets uh, a 9 or a 10. If, if Bob was a bit stronger and drew it, maybe it would get a 10, I think. Early game is, is really good. The leveling process is nice, I think. But uh, the end game, I think, is still lacking. I think we got a big step in the right direction with the, with the new patch. But if you already, like me, like reached the, the end game, like you reached level 100, and now the game, like with the Lilith nerfs and all the boss health nerfs and damage nerfs, it just feels really easy, like... I don't know, my current build, and I've seen many builds out there that just one-shot everything right now. And it just feels too easy, and um, yeah, I don't feel there is much of an endgame right now. And that's why I subtracted two points. Seven? Yeah, I, I'm, in this, I'm in the same boat, uh, about, a, about a seven. Um, yeah, I think, I think the, the improvements to the early game, much, much better. Endgame is, um, not, not only is it, as Rob said, like, sort of in a bad place in terms of the amount of content to do uh, and the you know insane amounts of damage that certain builds are doing right now. Uh, but also, I think that the philosophy of the end game feels like it shifted quite a bit, and maybe not in a good way. Uh, and uh, maybe we can talk more about that. But um, yeah, overall a seven as a total package right now. OK, guys. That is kind of something that I was expecting from you. Also, one little note I just want to add, since we had a bit of technical difficulties in the beginning, I forgot to say, uh, to announce something in the chat. Guys, we today going to be addressing some questions also to my wonderful guest, and we're going to be addressing some questions to you. We're going to be addressing the questions to the chat. Right now, in my chat, there is a poll, and you also can jump in and you also can vote. How would you rate the game right now? What is it for you? From 1 to 10, you can choose it. What I see right now, 7, 8 is absolutely winning. And the majority is saying 7, 7, 8, approximately 7, 8. Yeah, we have it. A couple of other questions also, guys, I will be announcing uh, that you can also vote. You can also answer. Who? Yeah, as I said, that's approximately that I believed you're going to say. but. You all, uh, I believe, we had a kind of bumpy start. Had, the season was delayed. A lot of, a lot of reports, guys, were coming that we have uh, some bugs, some lags, some disconnects, something, something was working, let's say, weird. So how was it for you? I would ask first, Rob, have you experienced any disconnects, US speed running? How much it affected you? The first... So 
days, it was the first hours, I don't know, the first days in the season. Felt uh, on day one and day two, obviously we had a two hour delay in the start. So we were like all ready in, in Discord, all prepared, ready to, to start the speed run. But yeah, and suddenly season didn't start and we got like a, a two hour delay. Um, but apart from that, I think day one and day two went pretty smoothly. But then when I tried to log in today, I had like a ton of issues. Like, I don't know if it was only Europe, but like I could not log in for like a solid two hours now. Um, but yeah, oh. on, on launch day, apart from the delay, it was fine. Guys, how, how were you, Moxie? Uh, it was pretty good. I actually like, I know everyone was kind of bummed when the delay happened, but it gave me a chance to like jump into my old characters and like, try and like see what was happening with the with the damage numbers and like what builds were going to hold up and like see what happened to bulwark um so getting that like little taste because i really like that they had the delay or the like stagnated season last time where you could like try some builds and try some like new aspects before the season actually went live ah, um, whoa so that was nice um and then actual launch was pretty smooth i had like some disconnects and some like crashes but just the uh, dopamine tunnels for a few hours and uh, it was really really fast it's almost like the whole game just feels a bit expedited right now in terms of the end game and the the leveling's just all just blitzing yeah i i uh i feel a lot the same way in that the um the extra few hours that we got was nice um I, I honestly don't think that's enough, though. Um, like, I, I really do think that they need to go to a PTR. There are some very clear bugs that uh, could have been solved with a PTR with this patch. Um, things like a uh, ball lightning sork, um, upheaval barb, for example, are, um, I think, way out of scale with the rest of the game. Um, even though the rest of the game has uh, sort of, like, come up, um, I wouldn't say there's like really any D or F tier builds right now. There's just a lot of C tier builds, B tier builds, A tier builds, and occasionally some S and like some super super S plus like broken builds. But like I think these are very obvious things that like could have been found um, even if there was like a week of PTR. Um, and obviously during that week of PTR, there's uh, there's theory crafting and people are preparing for the patch, but. Um, as we've experienced with uh, Diablo 3 and with those metas, uh, we have a saying in the community that goes something like, uh, never theory craft before patch notes, because you never know like what's going to happen, right? Um, so I, I, I do really think that the game should move to a PTR eventually, uh, so that we can you know, sort of experience uh, the new patch before it happens, find some of these bugs, some of these problematic things, um, and then when the when the season actually launches, that leads to an either even smoother launch. Now, um, I, I play hardcore, so what's what's interesting about playing hardcore is that you actually play on different servers than softcore, right? So um, your uh, server slash launch experience might be very different. Um, mine was mine was very very smooth, um, and I also play with all my like connectivity stuff off uh, since I play SSF. Uh, so uh, that even reduces like the the chance of like latency and other problems from happening uh, happening because I just really don't run into anybody in the world like ever. Um, so I I I had a lot of uh, I had a smooth start, but uh, also I did have some very scary disconnects. Um, uh, one of the things that uh, they did this season is they reduced the scroll of escape drop rate, which is supposed to give you that disconnect protection. It's, it, that they added. Um, and there were a couple instances where I disconnected in the middle of a group of monsters. And when I logged back in, I did not log back into town. I logged back into like the world, which means my character like slow logged out from the world. And somehow I was like still alive. So I just got very lucky with my disconnects. Um, but uh, but yeah, there's, there's definitely, at least when concerning hardcore, there's definitely um, a, a, a linkage between the um, problematic the 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 scroll of escape drop rate being too low and disconnects uh, particularly at like season start. So I, I wonder if like a solution to this would literally be like when you start a character you get like one scroll of you get like one free scroll of escape or something like that. I don't know, but um, uh, yeah, I, I felt like overall it was it was a pretty smooth launch. Um, 
all things considered. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't it supposed to be working that if you are in on hardcore, this can it disconnected you're supposed to like automatically this scroll of escape supposed to be used without like you're supposed to the game was supposed to teleport you immediately to the safe location yeah so, so is it there, it's not are... working how it's oh it's working or, or how it's going on right now so i haven't actually tested this yet like uh i think i think the thing to do would be to get like a a level one character put one scroll of escape on them and then have like the ethernet ca cable to my computer and just like unplug it and see what happens and see if they go back to town and the scroll of escape gets consumed. So I haven't test I haven't done that test yet. Um, uh, however, the problem here is that they reduced the drop rate of scroll of escape by, I want to say like a hundred times. Like it, you, they, I, I used to, I used to have hundreds of them in my inventory right now. I have five. So <laughs> Uh, after like cool. thirty, uh, after like forty hours of gameplay, so five. Uh, uh, and I, I think uh, I actually misclicked a few of them, so I think I got eight total drops. So eight total drops over the course of forty hours of gameplay is is a very very low drop rate for something that you're supposed to have for like disconnect protection. Um, also, the the other um, the other design philosophy of the scroll of escape is to allow you to attempt bosses without um, necessarily like. Uh, losing your character like 100% of the time if you don't succeed, right? So like you can do Uber Lilith and then, uh, oh no, this build doesn't, you can't do Uber Lilith and then scroll of escape out because otherwise what you would have to do is like make a softcore character, get them up to uh, exactly what your character has uh, on hardcore, attempt it, and then go to your hardcore character and attempt it, right? That, that's the away. only safe way to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, but guys, overall, we have so many changes in this patch and in season two. Do like a lot of okay, a lot of things has happened. We will try to go through some of them here. No, like in the first, the obvious guys, we have the new seasonal themes. Vampires are running around everywhere. We have the new vampiric powers. We have the new area. And no, overall, I would like to ask, and I would be addressing this question to Moxie. I would like to ask, like, how do do, do you like vampire, like our vampire power, uh, vampire season? And besides that, specifically, what do you think about the blood harvest? Blood harvest. Uh, a lot of people were telling me that's absolutely amazing, godly. I'm farming there, absolutely everything. Oh, it's so awesome. Uh, but is the drop rates in the blood harvest they are? Okay, or maybe it's too much, or maybe what's going on in Blood Blood Harvest? <laughs> it's uh, it's like overwhelming how good of a farm it is. Like if you can get a some people to just like join like a public session or get a get a group together, uh, and like because as you do it, you basically get your blood returned, and it is. It, it definitely has made finding aspects like way easier. Uh, one of like frustrations in prior seasons is like, oh, you get like the pulverized shockwave aspect. And that is like something that you can't put on your weapon because you might not get another one for like another 10 hours of gaming. Um, and that's made it at least really nice with the aspects until we get like a better solution uh, for finding those god roll aspects. You can just go there, spend like 20 minutes and get like six inventory fulls of loot um so that's been very nice the like seasonal theme and stuff like going to the blood harvest i haven't engaged with it like all that much besides just oh i'm gonna go over there for loot um and then i like got some of the vampire powers but the more focus for me has been the actual powers because like for example in like dopamine tunnels or any of the nightmare dungeons you can just get these vampire events and then you can get all the blood that you need to get your powers and then I just didn't really find myself going to uh, the Blood Harvest all that much. And I've been a lot more focused on the bosses. Uh, those have been like a much more interesting part or an addition to the game. Uh, I just don't see the seasonal mechanic being relevant towards the end game. Like it's nice for gearing. It's nice for getting some levels. Um, but it just there's not much content there to engage with once you're like level 80 plus uh, besides maybe getting some aspects or gold. But uh, you overall, know, theme's cool. You know what the uh, the blood harvest actually reminds me of? Like, just the the way that you farm blood harvest actually reminds me of all the farming we did um, towards the launch of Diablo Mortal, Rob. 
where you're just kind of like going from pack to pack and you just like explode the whole pack and then you just go to the next pack and you're really starting to like optimize on like spawn times and what you can pick up and like, uh, oh no, you need to go back to town. Somebody is out of town and you're not getting XP because you're not in town. Like all of those same sort of uh, things started like flooding back the same like optimizations. And I found that Blood Harvest was really fun because of that in that um, you would, as someone who really likes to, to like optimize their their XP and their farm, it's it's really fun to learn all of the subtleties of like where every single spawn is, what the good spawns are, what the good things to click on are, and so on and so forth. Uh, and the density was so good that uh, I think that that was like just a really fun part of it for me. I do think that um, the game isn't really like the game's architecture right now. There's no like loot filter or or way to like really figure out like what the good loot is. I don't think the game's architecture is really built for this level of loot dropping, um, and I think that's probably going to be problematic in the long run. Uh, so like in 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 hindsight, like uh, it, Diablo Immortal did this really really well, right? Where like the the amount of legendaries you were getting like per hour was like relatively low even though we were just blowing up tons and tons of mobs and it was still fun to blow up tons and tons of mobs right so like either uh th th there's there's like one of two paths I, I i feel like the devs could go down one is either you know you lower the drop rate down to sort of like an appreciable an appreciable level so that um you know the the, the those pulverized shockwave uh aspects are rare again and they're hype again when they do drop um as opposed to something that you're just like uh you feel like you're going to pick up milk at the store, right? You're just, oh, I'll just go farm blood harvest for 20 minutes and I'll find my pulverized shockwaves, right? Um, so I, I feel like you could do that. Or the other thing that you could do is that you could expand the end game and you could like add a loot filter, right? Um, and uh, if you have a loot filter, then it's a lot easier for folks to find the like particular loot that they need for their build. However, if you have that, then I think you need to make the itemization and the loot and the in-game and all that stuff much more complex, and there needs to be a lot more content there for you to be able to explore that level of loot um, and that level of complexity, right? So either you need to be able to explore complexity here, or you need to have like less loot dropping. I think ultimately with Blood Harvest. And what do you think, it Rob? Doesn't even it doesn't even have to be that hard, right? Like it, just a basic loot filter would already work for me. Like having nine hundred item power plus items. And maybe like perfect aspects, like those are the two filter options or something like that would already eliminate like 90% of the useless loot for me. I mean, it's a little better right now because of the sacred and uh, normal items are not dropping in World Tier 4. But with the Blood Harvest giving you so many legendaries and this is so much loot in general, it's, it's just a complete overload. Like you do actually one of these events and your inventory is instantly full. And if you're in a group, like you said earlier, Moxie, like you can actually keep this up like if you have i think you get like about 20 to 25 new blood lures every event and it costs like 150 so if you have like seven players you can just sustain this indefinitely and first of all we're thinking man is this intended like is this a bug but then actually mike zabura actually tweeted that this is intended so um we've been running this uh, for quite some time and basically been uh, getting all the all the aspects and all the loot ready I've really been min-maxing the, the farming routes for the Bloodlers, so you just need 100 to start and you can just sustain it forever. On the Empiric Powers, I really like that they are all like generic kind of style, so you don't really have one that's only like for your specific character, but you can uh, universally use them on, on all your characters. The only problem with that is that you have to refarm them. If I make like a Necro now, I played my Barb, I need to like re-level them. So that does not really make sense. I, there would be some feedback, like maybe just make it like account-wide. Because like we have all the renown and stuff, it's account wide now. Like these generic vampiric powers, I think, should be account wide. And then obviously the upgrading of the vampiric powers felt oh, a bit no. tedious. Like you actually have to like do five clicks or something to upgrade one power once, and you can only spend what was it twenty five uh, of the blood at a time. So there was like no spend all of your blood or something. And you can speed it up with escape, but it was just really annoying. And I feel like you said earlier, like, like having a like a PTR or some test server to kind of like get this. Obviously, like feedback in from from the players. Like, if you interact with that system for like one hour, you already know that the UI is is just not working out, right? And and same for some of the uh, mechanics in the game. Like overpower, 
I don't really know what's uh, going on behind the scenes, but it just seems to be doing so much damage. And it's great that Overpower is impactful, but it just feels really strong. Like, I've been recently been hitting for like half a billion with my death blow, and even the hardest boss in the game, which is Lilith, has like 40 million HP. So where are we going to go with all this like 10 times damage that we have? Like, there's just nothing. They can even tank a single hit in the, in the end game. I, I want to jump back to a couple things you 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 mentioned because I think they they might go straight over the head of some of the audience because you said that you you said that you said them in such a way that like maybe someone who's who's dumped forty hours into the season already would understand. But okay, so first of all, um, I've been playing SSF obviously, so I didn't know about this group strat, but I did see your tweet, um, and so what you're saying is that in the Blood Harvest there's an event that uh, you get these blood lures. And once you get 150 of them, you can start the sort of like pinnacle event or like end end event of the blood harvest, which summons just tons and tons of mobs. And then it summons uh, three bosses sort of like at the end, the, the like blood hunters or like the aspects of the blood hunters, whatever they're, whatever they're called, oh, the ancestors. Um, so what you're saying is that if you have 100 and you have what, seven people, that you yeah. can just do that event and then you'll get enough blood lures and from that event again. to just yep. do it again and then you can do, do it, it endlessly. indefinitely, basically. Is that just what you're doing? That's insane. Yep. Yes, it is. And I was like, <laughs> this is broken. But then I saw that tweet and yeah, this is fine. This is how it's intended. Okay, This we is go. team interaction. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. This, there are not so many team things that we can do. This is team interaction. This is all wonderful work as intended. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it even works. That's the beauty of it. You don't need a coordinated group necessarily. Like you can just have like random people that you meet around. In the open world. Yeah, I think that's the that's the beauty of it, right? Like we just meet like this random few guys in in the open world, and you do an event together. I think it's really cool. Guys, um, that's that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, I I need to ask something, and I need to ask also uh, this question. I will be also addressing to the chat. Because I'm just really, really wondering what are the what the people are thinking. But I think I know your answer, your specific answer to this question. I will be addressing this uh, question to Moxie. Do you care, or do you did you notice? Do you care about the seasonal story quest line? It was like you saw it. That was there. Like no, not at all. <laughs> I mean, to to start. I'm just like trying to level quickly, so I'm just skipping through that dialogue. And also, just like me personally, I just don't play ARPGs at all for the story. I'm there for the progression, I'm there for the grind, the like power fantasy. And so, like, I'm just gonna be blasting through and skipping story kind of regardless, like, even if it was like really good, uh, to be honest. It's obviously a benefit to have an interesting seasonal story that you can follow along but that's just not why i'm kind of like interested in the arpg genre so didn't really notice anything i, <laughs> I usually ask my chat i was like hey so what's uh what's going on <laughs> why am i fighting this big vampire again so i did to... go ahead i i did really care about the story this time around because there was so much unskippable dialogue there was so much dialogue that could have been skippable that was unskippable and i uh and that that made me mad so i actually um cared about the story in a negative way so <laughs> no I, I i'm right there with you moxie like you, you always skip the story um this is just a thing for arpg players um i I, it, it was interesting that like in the marketing for the season they put a lot of emphasis like on the story they were like oh we got this like big hollywood actor and the, the, they they made they a big do. to do about do. it and i was like uh, oh that's 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 cool but like what people care about is do i have to click upgrade uh my blood power like 1500 times and get carpal tunnel that's what people actually care about Exactly. I mean, guys, I'm guys, 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 wait, Rob, really sorry. Guys, once again, in my chat, you can vote. You can vote. Do you care about the story or not? Let's find out. Because, actually, I'm asking this question from time to time in my chat, and usually, always, people care. Carpal syndrome, yeah, yeah, the maybe. But usually, people care about the story. So, guys, vote. Do you care about the story? <laughs>
I always know there's lots of people that care, but for me, it's also the same. Like, I just try to skip everything. But where I did care about, like, was the trailers that they announced, like, talking a bit about the story. And one of the trailers got me really hyped. I think it was the one that they uh, put out, like, one or two days before. And it had, like, the showcase of the vampiric powers, and it had, like, this awesome music. And it was really good, man, to, like, pop us up it's, for the season. It's the one that looks like a slasher movie, right? Yes, yes. It, it yeah. was so good, man. Like, there was, like, some it was really the music. It was, like, really hitting, like, what was showing on the screen. And, man, that trailer got us so hyped. Like, I watched it, like, ten times on, on the stream. Yeah, they had that, uh, it was, like, an electric organ that came in. Yes. It was, like, new blood powers. It was <laughs> so good, yeah. man. Holy. It was really good. It was really well done. Yeah. I just felt the vibes, man. This vampiric stuff, like bloody, dark. Like I like it way better than what we had in season one. I think I think they that did was... a very good job with that. If they add some endgame, man, this is fantastic. Yeah, that yes. trailer. I I would I would point to that trailer if 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 Blizzard is watching this podcast for some reason. I would point to that trailer as as do more of that stuff because that was amazing. And less of the one that Rex reacted to. Uh, less, <laughs> less, of, less of math. Yes, less math. Less yeah, less that was, more, yeah, more that music was beats. In the poll in my chat, uh, you know, like, do you care about the story? Yes, one, but no, no, not care at all. But it was really, really close. We went pretty much 50-50. Uh, but uh, yeah, guys, and uh, I don't know, uh, you saw you saw yesterday again, once again, one new promotional video, I don't know how to specifically say uh, what, what Blizzard released yesterday with the blood, the Nate blood, for the, that was actually really, really well made video, there is a new promotion, action, how would you call it? The new thing that Blizzard is participating in. If you are till some day in November, will donate blood, and they will gather enough blood. Donate blood in a local hospital, and they will gather enough blood. You will unlock the transmogs in the game. Yeah, I and think transmogs will be unlocked for the whole community, for like for everyone. I yeah, I think the way it works is if you if if there's a total of six hundred and sixty six, of course, yeah. liters of blood donated like you have to go to the website and like pr provide proof that you donated blood and if there's 666 liters from the community then everybody unlocks the the the, the stuff um yeah that again it's just really really like we have the season of blood give me the blood come on marketing amazing godly level and the video they made absolutely godly absolutely amazing and dear americans it's available only in america europe cannot participate dear americans we believe in you the transmox will be available for absolutely everyone they will be unlocked for the whole for everyone so come on we need your blood uh anyway that was really beautiful guys <laughs> but there are different things in this game moxie it's, uh... It's DiabloBloodHarvest.com. Yep. We have it. Uh, Moxie, my dear. Ugh, again, damn it, starting with you, but okay. Uh, we have a lot of, a lot of quality of life changes, enormous amount in this patch. It's uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, a lot of things, a lot of things to change. We can't go through all of them, but I will ask you to call one that you like the most. And you can't call horse. You can't say horse. Horse is not allowed. What else? <laughs> One favorite quality of life improvement. Yep. Probably that you the search filter in the stash <sighs> is like so nice for just saving time for someone who's not the most organized when it comes to the stash tabs. Just being able to be like, oh, like because I'm testing something or I'm trying to make a build. Oh, I need this aspect like right now or I need uh, I want to try like arms that have lucky hit rather than the ones that I don't. Just lucky hit arms, boom, grab them, and then go is uh is really really nice. It's it's like the stash system is still not good. Like it, we need we need more space, and it needs to be um, a little bit more like organized. But it's a really good start with the filter. I like it a lot. For me, I definitely gotta go with the mark as favorite. I don't know what a game didn't launch like that, like picking <laughs> up like 50 items in your inventory and then like you have one good item and then you need to mark 49 as junk. That was not the play. And now we have the mark as favorite, so I never use the junk function ever again. I just mark my favorite items, like the uber uniques or anything, so you can never uh, get rid of it or salvage it. 
and just salvage the rest. And it's also really good for like your existing gear because it can happen that you by accident like switch out your weapon and then you salvage your inventory and your weapon is gone. So now if you mark, I, I would recommend for everybody to mark all the gear that you wear as favorites so you can not salvage it by mistake. I think that's a great quality of life feature for me. Okay, so I can't I can't do those and I can't pick horse. So I'm gonna go with all of the extra stashes that are in town now. Um, in fact, I I it was so burned into my brain that I had to go to this one stash that for the first like thirty or forty levels, I just kept going back to like the stash that's next Same to like... <laughs> exactly right. My and then eventually, like, why are you going there, Rob? What are you doing? <laughs> eventually, it was like, I, oh my god, I have to break this like bad habit now uh, of going back to the stash. So uh, now, typically. I go straight to the blacksmith stash. That's the one I use the most now. And then occasionally the one at the um, occultist is, is very useful. Otherwise, I don't really use the other stashes too often. And they changed. They moved also the Abol's uh, curiosity guy. Now it's not. He'll meet us in the field somewhere in the next city pretty much already it's uh, it's closer it's somewhere also around all the npcs and it's also freaking really really amazing like they did uh, they did good that's been funny to see as well because so many people like also had that burned into brain their location and then people being like uh is there no more obel vendors like are they just gone <laughs> they've been deleted and uh the other quality of life just to add on to that is the I really like that the like kind of the mini towns or the portals that are just like kind of in the middle of the middle middle of nowhere having like vendors and things to interact with is very nice. Yeah, really yeah I think it was awesome. I think they also went about it in like a pretty pretty good way because I think um I think that you have to be careful with that because you can actually go like over over like way too crazy with it and in, in, in that you can go into like the like poe land where essentially you have like your hideout and you have like a patch of dirt and then you have every vendor in a circle around you whenever you teleport in and it, you just you, you just i don't know like efficiency is everything and you lose all semblance of like the world and and where you are so like i kind of get what they were going for originally um i i i, I remember so many times uh going back to um uh what's what's oh what's the main town of Hawazer? uh i can't remember the name it starts with the main Z. town with the uh, Hawazar. it's okay um so, uh, but you go to the main town with Hawazar, and then you would go to the stash and then um that that person they would be like tamarius and they would talk and, and and you would hear like the 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 npcs and you'd get kind of the vibe of like what's going on and that sort of thing so i i mean i see what they were going for originally um, but obviously, like nobody wants to go and like click on the stash and then go here and then go back to the stash and then go there and then go back to the stash and then go here. So uh, it's it's good that they added some efficiency, even if it isn't every single vendor in a circle on a patch of dirt, right? Cities are really really beautiful. All the all the cities are made really really. You no, know, like you have the feeling that you are in the actual city. There are rats running around amazing but yeah the changes to the how way better you can use the city right now it's like oh, it feels good it feels good i must say uh rob you are the world first ultimate player here we go who finished uh, i i made mistake yeah you finished you reached level 100 in less than uh 24 hours in 18 18. It was, uh, it was about 19 hours. 19, uh, almost, almost correct. Wow. Um, anyway, but uh, this question is for you. What do you think and how do you feel the XP changes? Uh, personally, you personally as a speedrunner and overall for the health of the whole game, how do you feel it? So, first of all, overall, I think it's a very good change. It's a, it's a big step in the right direction because we had this, like, player curve where people really enjoyed the early to the mid game. And I think on launch, like, around level 70 where, was where a lot of people, like, got bored with the game. They got frustrated. Like, levels were taking so long. There was not really much for them to do. 
there was only like this Lilith über Lilith goal that they had, but there was like nothing in between that. Like they were level 70, Lilith was like way, way like out of the question. Like they just weren't powerful enough. So now what they did with these XP changes is make this like, and also the new Uber bosses, make this like process after 70 hitting all the way up to 100, like way better. There's a lot more to do. There's a lot more like mini steps, a lot more mini bosses and Uber bosses to kill before you get to fight Lilith. And just speeding it up by about, I think it was even more than 40% in the end, um, was, was a really good change. For us, it took me, so it took me 54 hours on launch to get to 100. Then on season one, it was, I think, about 35 hours. And now it's like down to like sub 20 hours, which is like some pretty crazy development. And for me personally, I liked it when the race was a little longer. I would always be very much for the very last levels. So I always compared with Diablo 2, like uh, the grind from like 98 to 99, for example, in Diablo 2, it's a very, very minor power tweak. Like you maybe get like one more skill point or like, you know, in Diablo 4, it would be like four Paragon points, which is maybe like 2% damage or something. So it's like a very minor thing. And I think it would be really nice for the longevity. And you could also add end game like this. If just the last level, let's say 95 to 100, takes really long because there would always be something for players to do even though it's a very minor power uh, spike so the more casual player base maybe they would cap out around 95 and they would not realistically get those last five levels but you still could if you if you were like dedicated for it or if you really wanted and you would only get a very small benefit but like for the like end game people that really enjoy min maxing and enjoy playing the the game for like multiple hours uh, I think it could be a, a very nice thing without making them too powerful. I think that's a pretty good take, Rob. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. And and one thing I was thinking a lot about is that, um, particularly during uh, season one, is like you have the whole world of content creators out there making content for D four, and of course when they show their new most powerful best build. Um, <laughs> Because every build is the best build uh, on when you go to always. click on someone's YouTube video. Um, they're always level 100. They're always fully maxed out. Uh, they, they have, um, you know, they're, they're trying to show off their build in the best way. So they're either doing Nightmare Dungeon 100 or they're doing Nightmare Dungeon 50, like super, super fast and just blitzing through it, right? Um, so as a normal player who like might get to level 70 and they get burned out, you never get to experience that, right? And you're following some content creator, or, or uh, you know, you're going to max or whatever, and you you can't ever experience the like level 100 or close to level 100 kind of same experience. And you your build feels clunky and maybe slow, and you don't have the movement speed, or you don't have the the, the damage multipliers or whatever, right? So I think the XP change overall is very good for that reason, in the sense that it lets people sort of achieve these sort of like very end game builds, which allow you to to blast through the game um, really quickly, blow up monsters as, as, as quick as you want, basically. Yeah, I like Rob's take a lot there. Just because right now we do have more end game, but it is still not like a, a lot of end game. And part of that grind uh, and that like objective is hitting 100. And that's like, going to take if that would take a little bit longer like that 95 to 100 um then you could have a little bit more to chase uh, extend that playtime out a little bit um and also just because there's now like more things to do um for example one of the things that i found while i was playing was i was really focusing on doing the bosses and that's where i was having the most fun um and then i wasn't getting into the nightmare dungeons as much so i had like level 100 level 100 character on my build and i've got like level three glyphs in just because i haven't been in the nightmare dungeons i haven't been leveling those glyphs and and uh having a little bit more time uh just in the like 95 to 100 to really get to like feel your character out get that like more sense of progression uh with the glyphs and and the bosses could be really nice but overall leveling changes feel really good it would be cool to get one more difficulty, a, uh, uh, like a Nightmare 5 is the one thing that I would add, just because once you're level 100, you've got all these things right now, uh, there's just, and they nerfed Lilith and Uber Durial's just kind of not all that difficult. Um, getting like an extra difficulty for pushing even further would be really, really nice. 
case. Uh, and again, this question I would be addressing also to the chat. Do you think is the game that the game is too easy right now? Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, Echo, Echo, tell me. Yeah, kind of. Oh, 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 yeah. The, the game is definitely <laughs> way, way too easy right now. To the point that, essentially, the the best builds in the game are going to shift. Um, I think to whatever does the biggest damage uh, thing on the screen. So if you can hit the entire screen, then you can one-shot the entire screen, and that's going to be the best thing. So uh, essentially, movement speed and and whatever does the largest damage radius is going to end up being the the, the best builds, um, I, I think, uh, in, in the next couple of weeks as people sort of suss things out and, and, and figure things out. Um, that that said, uh, because everything is so easy, you can really play whatever you want, right? You can play some super scuffed builds, and they will they will demolish things. So, of course, um, prepare your YouTube comments for someone walking into your YouTube comment and and saying, "Oh, hey, you know, I played insert absolutely horrible D tier build here, and it was better than your build." Your build sucks, right? Prepare for that comment because they're coming. Yeah, there, there's just no measurement anymore. Like you, usually, like we used to compare builds, like how well they did on Lilith, like DPS wise. If you could like face her, like before she does her mechanics and stuff, or if you could beat her at all. And some builds were like really struggling with that. But I feel like now, like you say, probably every like core skill or every like build that that uses any skill in the game can probably can probably do it very reliably. And it's just like there's no comparison because the only thing that people will compare now is is those damage numbers, and that's like just irrelevant at some point. Like we're gonna get, I think, a test dummy um, in in season three. I hope that has like some DPS meter as well. One, um, one, really two, cool. one, one, two, one, so which is like actually next week. should be before even. Oh before yeah, the yeah, true. Blizzard. Actually, it should be soon. Hell yeah, let's go. I mean, that would be that would be fun. So then maybe we have some measurement at least of DPS output. I hope. I don't know if they, they didn't really show if there was a DPS meter, but that could be something at least to compare builds. But then again, you get these builds, and maybe you you keep farming the real to get your uber uniques. But then even if you get the uber unique, there's nothing to do with your build. Like you already did all the content. You did the Nightmare Engine 100. You did the Lilith. You did Duriel. Like what? What are you gonna do? You know, like you just make some other build, but that's it. Like there's not really like any end game there. Guys, don't forget that you can vote in case if you want. You can vote. Is the game too easy right now? How does it feel, Voxia? <laughs> yeah, I would say it. It, it is a bit easy. I, I do agree with Echo Hack in that, like, when people are coming in and asking, like, oh, like, what's the best build or like who's the best character right now like genuinely i think obviously there's gonna be like a difference between the builds and the characters but i think right now if you wanted to play something and you're gonna invest the time and the gear to get it going like you can do the content in the game with that build if you like some builds will need more gear some builds will need less but uh like genuinely right now in terms of balance like it does feel like there's a lot viable uh which is really nice in terms of just build diversity uh, that does kind of come with the game being easier is build diversity increases so it can be a little bit tough to like oh i want to play all these different builds and then also have that challenging level content um but overall yeah it's a bit easier than i was expecting especially with all the changes like i, I know that they changed the damage formula and they also like the big point was that they were like nerfing enemies and i thought it was going to be harder like genuinely with with the changes and, and us dealing less damage but just because that enemy nerf kind of covers that distance uh, i think that's kind of what is accounting for it partly being so easy and this is something they could like prevent if they also have a ptr because like it just seems like they nerf things way more than the damage that we lost from uh, the crit and the vulnerable nerfs so everything is just like complete easy now like i i've seen uh, people like yeah they, they beat lilith but there's she just doesn't do any mechanics anymore it just a bit sad that like so much of the game is like trivial or, or gone now you know usually like you had to dodge all the stuff on the lift but now people just go in and kill her in a few hits and uh, it's just not like the fight that i remember anymore there there is one thing that they nerfed 
that uh, I do think was not overdone. Uh, in fact, there's one mob that I, I still have a problem with, and that's the CC. So CC is like more or less effectively gone from the game, uh, save for like a couple of mechanics and a couple of mobs, right? Like uh, frozen on elites, um, like wind wall. If you decide to stand in it, it's pretty easy to dodge wind wall now. Um, the only mob I have a problem with now are these like spiders in fractured peaks that stand two screens away from you and just artillery launch these these uh, frozen things at you. And there's like five of them and they're all like here, 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 here on like two screens away and they'll all just hit you and insta-freeze you. Um, that's the, literally the only thing I have a problem with in the game in terms of CC. But uh, yeah, they, they drastically nerfed CC from what it was at launch to the point that I think people are going to like if, if you didn't play at launch you're going to forget how bad it was in, in the sense that like they the, the durations are all like cut in half the some mobs just basically don't even hit you any like uh, frozen like chill spiders like no problem anymore those things I used to see a chill spider and went my character is going to die right now I'm going to lose I'm going to lose my level 100 character Right, I, I just just a random chill elite doesn't happen anymore. Right, it's it's super easy now, and I think that's a good change. What? <laughs> no, probably I don't know, guys. I have um, I'm obviously more casual than you, but someone also in the comments told me that uh, Anna, you're also not casual enough because you're anyway also playing way too many hours. Uh, but um, I'm playing this season Incinerate Sorceress, which is one of those builds that's not supposed even to work. But this season, it's working, and it's perfect, and it's amazing, and I have the challenge. Because, yeah, nothing is done that easy for me at all. And uh, this is absolutely great. On one hand. On the other hand, uh, isn't Diablo games, they all about suffering? And... This is this makes me think um, we're so quick finish, uh, reaching level 100. CCs are not existing anymore. No, you can die now just because the monster froze you. I don't know. I don't know. You should suffer in a Diablo game. You should always think, feel like the danger is coming from the corner. I feel like this is something that uh, a lot of modern gamers, let's say, want. Like they they wanted. To be pretty comfortable and and uh, pretty straightforward, they want to be rewarded at all times. They want this like more instant dopamine hit, and it kind of works in the grand scheme of things. But I, I think there would be also like a, just a good thing to have something to do in in, in the long term for uh, you know Absolutely. players that just play a couple more hours. My only concern with like quote unquote like game being easy. Uh, and, and like what they're gonna do with that is we saw what happened uh, a bit to the community when that big nerf patch dropped uh, right before season one and if they are gonna make tweaks to the game how they're gonna handle that if they make leveling slower which people won't like if they uh, make uh, us deal less damage again or nerf the like death blow upheaval barbs or the like uh, ball lightning sorks things like that like obviously changes are going to happen, but I'm curious if, if anything's going to get done during the season, uh, which I kind of doubt, versus, like, if they're going to, like, what's going to happen between seasons. Um, just curious to how they're going to handle that, if if they're going to try to nerf us and increase all the bosses and stuff like that. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say uh, the way the game is sort of architected right now, that there's lots of room for them to make the monsters harder, without really touching uh, players too much, except for, you know, maybe upheaval, maybe um, ball lightning. Uh, there, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a couple here and there that, that might, need, might need some, some touch-ups. But, um, you know, I think, I think uh, it's really... The problem right now is really the monsters just... They don't do enough damage. Um, they, you know, don't ha have enough HP. Like, I walked into Duril, I did... I, I thought it was going to be a really hard fight, and uh, it was easier than a nightmare dungeon boss. Right? It was <laughs> uh, uh, so like that kind of thing. Um, 
I think would uh, would make the game a lot more interesting. And so I, I think there's plenty of room to do that without that sort of like negative backlash that that you're talking about there, Boxy. Uh, I really also hope that we were guys a lot of talks that uh, the leaderboards are coming. The leaderboards are coming with a new activity. I know my hope and dream that this will be something. Something for what you will need the damage. They're going to be the leaderboard. They're going to be something. I have no idea what. Afraid even to think about what it's going to be. But if there will be something that where you will be facing all the time. some Something challenging. I think that can be also the way. How it will all work out. Guys. But. Here, professionals, really smart people sitting in front of me, all level 100, uh, all level 100 here. Guys, what is the best leveling strategy? Can you tell us, more casual players, what during your trip to 100, how you were leveling? Moxie, can you tell us what is better? Farming blood harvest non-stop till 100 and on which point you stopped and actually started doing nightmare dungeons? Blood Harvest can be crazy if you, like, have a group and kind of can do what Rob's strategy was, but also if you don't have people to play with or aren't getting lucky with your public instances, then you can spend time waiting there and trying to get people. And I've had situations where, like, everyone wants to interact with the Harvest uh, mechanic, but they're not sure if people are going to, like, donate the blood, and you get one person who donates, and then no one else does. Uh, and so if you can get a group for that, that's, like, crazy uh xp and gear i personally just did the domain tunnels uh till about 75 which was that's like the mob density in there is so good feeling uh and you can bring so many different kind of builds into there the enemies are easy it's just a normal dungeon um and that's was really really good leveling for me personally obviously like rob would know better he got to 119 hours or 19 hours um but yeah that's what i was enjoying yeah, I mean, it was a similar world for me. Like, we basically started with, with dopamine tunnels, like, from level one. And we also did it, like, to, in the 80s and the 90s. And then run Nightmare Dungeons. What I really like in the Nightmare Dungeons, you, first of all, you instant teleport there, so there's less downtime between them. And they really improve the objectives and also the density in there. It just feels every Nightmare Dungeon is just packed with monsters now, similar to dopamine tunnels. And that just feels really good to fight a lot of enemies. And for a lot of builds... Um, it really helps with resource generation and things like that because you, you get or even damage because you get more damage or more procs of something if there's a lot of monsters there. So it just makes it like really smooth and you, you always have something that you're fighting. You're always engaged in combat and you're just constantly playing and there's less town because also you um, get a lot of um, sacred and normal items now as crafting materials. So especially in, during the leveling process in dopamine tunnels, that was so noticeable that you just did not have to go to town every run and obviously that improves the overall experience because you actually yeah. spend more time playing the game and less time just looking through useless loot basically as a ssf player i had a i had a little bit of a different experience uh but but similar in that uh one to 50 i did uh blood harvest uh and then after 50 i started doing nightmare dungeons um I found in particular Sirocco Caverns, the, den the density in there and the XP in there is very, very strong. Uh, Sanguine Chapel also has really, really strong density. And then if you're just trying to level your glyphs, the Goa Ruins um, is essentially a nightmare dungeon where they removed all of the objectives and you can walk to the boss uh, in like four or five rooms with like a, one of those little intermediary um, things uh, in the way, so you can you can basically if you're speedrunning it, you might be able to do it in like 30 seconds if you like one shot the boss. So it, go go runes is, is is really strong for leveling those glyphs. Um, there's there's uh, definitely some that are not so great. Uh, Blood soaked crag and deserted underpass, I think we're we're pretty terrible. Um, there's there's a section I think it's uh, I think it's deserted underpass. I can't remember. It, it might be blood soaked crag, but there's a section where essentially like. You need to go to the next part of the dungeon, and you go under this like rope, right? You go under this rope, and then you go up, and then you cross the rope, and you painfully cross the rope, and then after you painfully cross the rope, then you have to climb down on the other side, which from just like, 
just from like the dungeons section there's like it once you climb down the other side there's like a little fence that's there and i'm like oh okay like my all-powerful god of death can't like hop the fence like yep really or so like down the, there or something like like what like so like just from like a dungeon architecture perspective like why did you make me go up and only, only just to make me go down again it and it feels really bad so uh there, there's a couple things like that there's a couple dungeons where you have to like um you have to like go get the stone and then you have to double back and there's lots of backtracking there um so there there are some uh nightmare dungeons to watch out for but but overall um i felt like uh Particularly if you do, if you get the XP from uh, monsters that are ten levels higher uh, than you, the XP is like really, really fast. Uh, towards the end, I was, I was doing about at level ninety nine. I was doing one nightmare dungeon, and that was like a fourth of a level or so. Uh, so the XP, uh, and that's solo, right? So like the XP is very, very good. Yeah, I also noticed they they actually buffed these cursed shrines and cursed chest density by a lot. I remember like oh. for this patch, sometimes there was like literally two monsters per wave spawning, and now you have like twenty or something like on every wave. And we should talk. Adds, like, we should talk this. about that because they fixed. So they fixed most of them. So uh, the dungeon events, right? So like, there's a whole bunch of different dungeon events. There's like cursed chest, cursed shrine. Um, then there's all the little like rooms you have that have all these different um, dungeon events. So uh, they fixed most of them, and then they broke curse chests in like a beneficial way. So like the curse chests now, I, I want to say like forty percent of the time, all of the mobs will spawn inside of the chest, and so you can just stand on top of the chest and and spam your like AOE constantly, and yep. you will you will you will clear like seventeen waves on that curse chest, and which Shiba goes. Brr. <laughs> yeah, which is which is like not good from like uh, game health perspective and they definitely need to fix that bug but for an xp uh farmer i there were some times where i'd get one of those and that would be like a fourth of a level it would be insane no, no, no. uh the the events um they fixed almost all of them except for a couple um there's a i forget exactly what it's called it's the one where you have to like hunt you, you there's like a hunter and you have to like kill beasts or whatever um, that that event is still terrible, right? It still has like the old density and stuff. So some some of the events um, here and there uh, are are still bad, and they still need to fix them. Um, so it's not a hundred percent fixed, but I want to say it's 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 like eighty five percent fixed, uh, and and the events feel all pretty good now. The events where I, I don't know if it's like a, tied to a specific event or you just get lucky with the mobs where it spawns like the like 20 of those massive demons or uh, devils just all popping up right on top of each other. You hit them with like a pulverize or whatever. And <laughs> it just all dies. So satisfying. Feels good. Guys, I am putting the notes here. Uh -huh. So uh, ruins, nightmare that, uh, ruin the nightmare dungeon where you can just run directly to the boss and upgrade your uh, glyphs. Because we, today we were the whole day uh, upgrading the glyphs and I don't know, maybe because we did so many Nightmare Dungeons before in Season 1, right now I don't want to do Nightmare Dungeons. I want to do anything but Nightmare Dungeons. <laughs> so yeah, okay guys, thanks so much. Really, really helpful, wonderful. Uh, uh, guys, and uh, I will be dropping this question on the rope. Uh, my dear, have you noticed resistances? Any resistances? The changes that the were resistances changes they happened actually during your level into one hundred during your nineteen uh, hours that you were playing. There were any, ever a moment when you like stopped and like, hmm, I need to check what is there actually with my resistances, dude. Like, do I so, need to you know upgrade something, change my gear maybe? So a hundred percent, it was noticeable. I think. In my race, I actually went into the uh, World Tier 4 where you actually have then a minus res if you if you don't have a, have a good base. I think I actually had like minus 10 fire res or something, and I, I engaged in, in dopamine tunnels with one of those fire dudes from the Vampiric um, questline, and it was insane. Like, this fire wave just one-shot me. So um, there was definitely, that, that was the moment where I, okay, I have to go to town, I have to... Like, get at least one gear that has fire res, because, like, as you're leveling and as you're going fast, you're just throwing on, like, random items, and uh, at some point you gotta take a second look at them and make sure that they all uh, have a different res. Especially on Barb, it was, like, harder early game to, to find the resistance. 
Um, I think on like intelligence class, it would have been a bit easier. But overall, I think that getting like a single rest roll on one of your pieces, like a helm is pretty easy or boots is pretty easy to get a roll. I really recommend that. Um, just have have that one there. It, it gives you like 60 or 50 to 60 rest, depending on, on how high your roll is. And that just like helps out a ton. And then you can, um, depending on which rolls you have, just have the other rest as a single uh, gems in your jewelry. And that helped out so much. And in World Tier 4, especially if you're doing Nightmare Dungeons, I definitely recommend you have at least 50 of uh, every resistance. And um, that's just just a goal that you should uh, strive for. But overall, this this rework is is, is really fantastic. It feels really impactful. It also adds another like puzzle and thing to min max on your character. You have to look out for it, and you have to like move your paragon boards around or move your gems uh, glyphs around accordingly. And I think that's a it's a really cool system. Yeah, there is what actually... is your experience? Go yep. ahead, Moxie. Sorry. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah, the resistance is. Felt I in that like downtime where we couldn't play the season yet because it got delayed. I jumped in on like one of my level 100 characters that had like 0.6 resistance in like all of the categories. I had no resistance rolls. I had nothing in my like jewelry. I just went into a nightmare 100 and just got bodied. <laughs> like I was getting, dying way faster. And I think they're in like a good spot. The resistances. Um, like it's very noticeable when you go up against a boss. If you're going against Varshan, if you like make sure that you're capped out on, like, Shadow if you're going against Uriel and you're getting that, like, poison. Um, but it also didn't feel to me, like, um, when I play Path of Exile, there's such a... I don't... I, it feels so different when you have cap resistances for everything versus you're, like, a few percentages off of capped on the survivability change. Like, it feels relatively comfortable getting, like, 60, 65 in all the categories, um, and obviously it's going to be better if you can get it to 70, but it didn't feel like I couldn't survive if I didn't have all of my resistances maxed out and capped. Uh, so, so far, I really like that change. Yeah, so oh, okay, that's really interesting to hear. So I, because I play hardcore and um, I, I play a necromancer as well. Um, so preseason, I spent a lot of time theory crafting resistances to so that, you know, as I was leveling, I could always have a cap res um and and because on hardcore that's that's what you do is you you you, you basically over prepare the amount of resistances and uh damage reduction and all, all that kind of stuff that you need so um i actually didn't notice it at all because i always had uh cap res and i i, I was i was just ready to go so I, I had no problems um with that and you know when i walked into durial i had 75 and then i ran the 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 max res uh, uh poison potion i did i probably didn't even need it right i, I could have walked in there without the max res po poison potion and been, been fine but um yeah that, that's really interesting to hear that uh, both you and rob like totally noticed the change um because uh i think that is like correctly punishing like if you don't um whether you're playing hardcore or, or softcore um, it's correctly punishing if you don't build into the defensive stats uh, that you need. For me, on the sorceress with intelligence absolutely everywhere, it actually was, I haven't noticed it at all. What I noticed that sorceress that was really, really squishy character, always was really squishy character. When I was playing it pre-season, it was super squishy character. Guys, right now I have one shield, I feel myself immortal. Uh, around me, there is a necromancer, uh, druid running around. They are dying. I am the one in the dungeon who is staying there, chilling and resurrecting me and resurrecting them. And I am, I don't know, I am immortal on the sorceress with the mm. resistances uh, right now. And uh, it feels uh, the change is there. Clearly, the change is there. Yeah, I think so maybe it's also also really affecting. helps with resistance uh, with uh, just the overall damage reduction. Like on top of the resistance, they also like uh, they they nerf the armor on like helms and stuff, and now they they buffed it again. You can actually get like thirty percent <laughs> armor on like your defensive stats. And uh, I was running around like twelve k armor without disobedience, and disobedience armor <laughs> doubles it again. So I have a twenty six percent armor roll on my helm right now, yeah. and I'm like not even trying. It's not even. I don't even have like nine twenty five gear yet. It's just, yeah, it's just not even. Used not be, even trying. It used to right? be like all your percentage armor before the patch, and now you just get right. it on one roll basically. So yeah. We're getting the game is just getting easy for sure. Yep, absolutely. Uh, okay, that is 
interesting guys i have uh, a question to you so i know that you defeated all the uber bosses i'm pretty sure but uh i have this question for the chat guys have you defeated all the uber bosses or just some of them chat guys you can vote in the chat but here the blasters right in front of me echo have i know that rob got the grandfather already have you got oh, any yeah. uber uniques oh, nice. already uh i i haven't um and actually i i i, I haven't killed all the all the new bosses um oh, not sorry. because <laughs> they're they're not they're they're not easy um but because the way that they've gated some of the components for the bosses i think is is like far too limited um so uh a good example of this is a uh, Gre gregory Gre greg i just call him greg um so greg um and lord zeer both are actually really tough um to farm up because the events that they're linked to are time-based um so first of all uh, Lord Zir, you can get uh, his exquisite blood either from killing a world boss, which on World Tour 4 will give you three exquisite blood, or you can do a, a Gathering Horde event, um, which will give you one exquisite blood. But there's a, there's a gotcha to the Gathering Horde. So the Gathering Horde, you have to get all three chests to get the one exquisite blood. So if you walk in there like me, like an SSF player, there's a real chance that because uh, essentially you have to do the work of like 10 players all by yourself, right? There's a real chance that you won't get that third chest. And if you don't get the third chest, you essentially get nothing. You get no, you, you did the whole event and you get no progress towards uh, doing Lord's Ear. And it feels really bad. So I think one change they could do there is that the first and second chest could at least have a chance to drop exquisite blood. I think that would be really nice. And, uh, the uh, other thing is Greg. So Greg, um, you have to do Helltides, and there are these new 300 um, Cinder chests, uh, and they, they have the same rules as the 250 chests in that there are there are two of them, and then uh, when the hour rolls over, those two will, will respawn. So some of the Helltides, not every Helltide, but some of the Helltides you can get four 300 chests. Um, so every time I can get four 300 chests, I get four 300 chests. But if you open any other chest, those chests cannot drop the, um, I think it's called like something steel. I forget what the- Living, living what steel. Called. Living steel, living steel. Um, uh, oh, also there's a bug. They're leveled as 300, but they only cost 280. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, the living steel only drops from the 300 to 280 chests. And I believe that it really should have a chance to drop from the 250 chests and from the you know 150 and 125 and, and 75 chests as, as well. Um, because it just, A, um, feels really bad for somebody who, like, opens a normal chest. Like, why would you even no open a normal chest anymore? Um, and, uh, and, 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 and B, once you finish all of the 300 chests, like, let's say you're an Omega Blaster like Rob, and you just walk around, you one-shot everything on the screen. Once you open all of the 300 chests, you have nothing else to do in Helltide, right? You're, you're, you just leave Helltide. You're done. So um, I think, uh, oh, and I, last change there I think would really help is that um, uh, the blood harvest, you can actually carry your keys and your blood lures from event to event. They don't reset um, every time. So if we could have that same thing for Helltide where the senders don't reset every time there's a new Helltide and you could just carry them over from Helltide to Helltide, I think that would also help with the sort of like living steel situation with Greg. Um, and that sort of thing. Um, so I, I think a lot of players are actually going to want slash need to kill Greg because you need his components for Duriel and just not be able to because they go, oh, Helltide isn't active, and then they like will log out of the game and go make a sandwich or something, right? On your note on like the normal Helltide chest not being worth, with the changes to like loot, like sacreds and stuff not showing up, the times that I've opened, like a Helltide helmet chest or armor, nothing shows up because Absolutely. that loot is dropping, but it's not actually showing because it just gets like auto dismantled. So you'll open up a chest and then see your uh, see your resources go, and then there's just nothing on the ground to pick up. You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> that so uh, freaked me out. I was like, what the heck? What? And then, then okay, then maybe it was the lower... But it so freaked me out. What? What? Why that you are even here? What just happened? 
Yeah, I'm personally yeah. okay with that, but uh, I think I th uh, because I'm used to that from like PoE with like loot filters and stuff. You just open chests and nothing happens, right? But uh, the the key difference between that and PoE is that in PoE the player has done something to make that happen, right? The player has gone and turned on a loot filter, and they've said, "Hey, I don't want this garbage loot to to, to show up." And they have knowledge of that thing not showing up because they've made that decision. They made that choice. And then right now in the game, you make no choice. The devs have decided for you that these things will auto dismantle. You go, you open the chest, you spend the loot, and then you get nothing. That feels kind of bad because you didn't make the decision for that to not show up. Now, if you made that decision and you know there was like a little guy in town that was like, Hey, I'll auto I'll auto dismantle all your loot for you. I'm the loot filter guy, right? And you went and turned that on. Then that's a that's a choice that you made, and and you should understand that you made that choice. And you go, oh, okay, like so. I, I think there's a little subtlety there that um, could improve the experience. Um, in that, like, it's not necessarily bad that no loot shows up, but like, it should be something that the player has control over. Mm -hmm. A guy also with a grandfather. <laughs> I think it's a. I think it's a good. Um, it would be a nice change to just have them, the cinders carry over, like Echo you suggested. That would help a lot. You could stack it, and then it's sometimes the health that completely sinks with the hour, and then you only have the two chests. So I don't know. Maybe just add like four of the the big chests, so to make it a lot easier to to get them. I don't know. Like that could be a, a good suggestion. But yeah, in terms of uber uniques. Um, I was obviously uh, doing a lot of uh, Duria kills. I think I'm around 200 kills now. Plus, I, I got some help from my stream. <laughs> I've got two grandfathers right now. I got two times Doombringer and uh, the Ring of the Starless Sky. I'm still hunting for the Shaco. It hasn't happened yet, but I've had many people in my games that actually found the Shaco, and it's always a super hype moment. And yeah, when we got the grandfathers, it was also super hype moment. So I really liked the the changes that they did with that. Just uh, having people bringing the materials together and then being able to do Duriel yourself, right? Uh, in a team. So you don't have to, like if you have one Duriel spawn, you can actually kill Duriel four times if you have four people there, um, if they all bring one set of materials. And I think that's a, a really nice uh, change. It really gets the community together, gets the community hyped, uh, finding some of these uber uniques. Now we just need something to do with them. <laughs> so, so you've killed your, you've killed you've killed Duriel two hundred times, and you found six Uber uniques. Is that correct? Yes. So the drop it's, chance is like it's like two percent. It, it's about two percent. Is and I yeah. also um I have more statistics because like, I also asked all my viewers if they find an Uber unique to link it. So I actually have times four, and I think right now it's two point two percent drop chance for the Uber okay. uniques. Okay. On yeah. about like almost a thousand. Uh, a thousand that feels guys. good to me. That feels good. Ah, is it good? Yeah. And yeah, before the patch, I actually asked my chat and I asked a lot of other people and creators like what they think a good drop chance is. And the usual answer was between 1% and 2%. So you do 50 to 100 kills. And right now it seems they landed on around 50. If it's if it's a flat number, I think 2% is very likely. So you do 50, 50 uber dual kills and on average, you will see one of the uber uniques. And there's like five of them. So you can make the math of, of how many you need depending on your class to do. At least on average, find that uber unique. You might get it first try, what well, might take you a thousand tries? Who knows? When you, uh, I found the like the heart of Selig Uber Unique amulet. When you were finding your Uber Uniques, were you getting like two unique drops when you were finding the unique, the like normal one plus an Uber Unique, or just the Uber Most Unique? Most of the time, like I had uh, many people in the chat theory theorizing about that as well. Most of the time, I found two uniques, so like the normal unique and a plus the Uber Unique. But I also and the, the ring of the starless sky i just found a ring and it was the uber unique mm. but most of the time if you see two uniques drop there's a very high chance there's an uber unique in there mm. uh yeah there, actually there's something worth mentioning here because like we've we've totally i think people have already put it out of their minds but there was a big concern before the season started that there was going to be this uh this like i don't know i call it like a material smuggling where essentially like people do uh gregory for example in a group and then by one person opening it then four people would get materials from the drops but uh what we've discovered is that that's actually not the case and that only the person who starts the boss fight can get the materials for durial uh from that boss from that particular instance of the boss fight so even if you bring a group you can't like 
multiply your materials and do this like 16 times multiplier um, theory crafted strategy that we had. So thankfully, uh, whether they remove that last minute or they plan that out ahead of time, thankfully that is not the case because I think that I think that would be really problematic for solo players to like. It, it's it, I think it's fine if like you get this like four x group durial thing. I think that's fine. Um, but to have like sixteen x for group is is like crazy. Yeah. So thankfully that's not the case. Yeah, it's definitely a hundred percent good thing that uh, it's not sixteen times as efficient to play in groups as well. Like the gap is already pretty big with four times efficiency, and definitely a, a good thing to to not have that. But again, like I really like that people can come together and like you know I I have like four of the shots and the other guy has four X or something. Now we can do two runs together. Like that's just really nice. Like getting people together there and getting them hyped to to finally find these items in the game. They do exist. It's it's interesting to know that it's like maybe around like a two percent drop chance for those uber uniques because i got my first uber unique before i found a tempest roar which was the like <laughs> item that most druids are looking for um i did finally get my tempest roar but this was the definitely the longest it took are you guys noticing that you're finding less uniques dropping from nightmare dungeons yeah, I wanted versus, to talk about this. Yeah. Versus like the because now you get a ton from bosses, but I I don't think I've seen a single unique in an actual nightmare dungeon. I've I've found three, uh, and I leveled com completely from fifty to one hundred using nightmare dungeons solo. Right. Mm. Um. So yeah, my I I totally had this. I I I completely believe that they must have nerfed the drop chance of uniques in nightmare dungeons pretty significantly. I want to say, like, they nerfed it by, like, one-tenth of what the drop chance was previously. Uh, it, 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 feels, it, feels pretty, it feels pretty bad, I think. Um, and, and one reason this feels pretty bad, uh, to me at least right now, is because then it feels like you have to kill the bosses in order to get your unique items. And so the bosses are less like, hey... You know, it's really hard for me to get all these components as I do the play the other parts of the game, and now I can have a chance of going and target farming this thing, and more of well, if I want this thing, I have to go do this, and you're like forced into that game mode, and that feels that feels bad to me. I specifically noticed it on the reward screen, like when they added this like rewards to Nightmare Dungeons, like I, I was getting like quite a lot of uniques from the reward when you finish the Nightmare Dungeon, and I I don't think I've gotten at least I don't remember a single getting a single unique from that in in all my playtime this season, and uh, it just I've gotten gives, one, yeah, and it just gives you like less of a reason to do Nightmare Dungeons. Like if you have your glyphs leveled, I mean, there's no leaderboard, there's. It's just no reason, for, I think, to do the Nightmare Dungeons anymore. Like, you just do, like, the Uber bosses, you do the Blood Harvest, like, you get way more loot there, and you can get your Uber Uniques only from Duriel. I mean, they, they like, realistically, they cannot drop anywhere else. And maybe they even have a, <laughs> a more abysmal chance to drop in Nightmare Dungeons. Now, like, nobody found a Shaco in the Nightmare Dungeon ever, basically. This is not a person that I know. I'm really, really surprised um, that it's actually only 2%. Yeah, it feels like, uh, without seeing actually statistic, it feels like now also in my chat people are appearing, I got the shock, oh, I got the shock! With the... How it's like day four of the season, what's going on? <laughs> or, some, or something like this. But okay, actually 2%, that's, yeah, that seems to be absolutely reasonable. And not bad. Guys, I have a question for you. I have a question for Moxia. How do you think? How long gonna be your season? How since you are level one hundred, you defeated the bosses. Uh, there is seems to be like no challenge for you right now in the game. How long you will stay in the season? As long as things are still interesting, like. I think with the changes, there's more builds to try and mess around. Like, I'm already on my, like, third Druid build, um, and the all the different builds being pretty viable feels good, so I think I'm going to be trying a lot more builds, whether how long, like, I'll, like, keep playing. Obviously, I don't know. Um, but I do plan on trying a lot more builds because I'm going to be able to get more characters to 100, 
and there's more build diversity right now. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to that. I'm probably going to be starting my second character pretty soon. Um, but yeah, I've just been really enjoying experimenting with all the different things and seeing what is working. I did mess around with the new Dolmen Stone boulder build, which is really, really fun. Um, it, it's almost like ball lightning sork, but with boulders, because um, you could just get them infinite casting. However, I was I found out that uh, it just gets destroyed by suppressor elites because the boulders, as soon as they touch that bubble, they go away. And then there's a dead zone between your character and the boulders where they don't do any damage. And so if the suppressor, if you cast them in the suppressor elite, and then like the suppressor elite takes two steps to the left or right, then all your boulders go away. And so that was the build I was like planning on doing a lot with that just like gets <laughs> demolished, unfortunately, uh, in Nightmare Dungeons as soon as there's a suppressor elite on screen. But uh, we'll see how long I end up really like going for. Yeah, with the fast nature of gaining XP now, I'm also looking forward to like check the boulder bills, for example. I think that looked really cool. I definitely want to try that out. And it's just like cool, like you can you can now test characters like very comfortable, like spend a few hours leveling them and you're already there rocking like Nightmare Dungeons or like mid to end game and I think that's really cool. I definitely plan on, on playing the season um at least until BlizzCon. We'll see what we what we get there, what the, all the news will be from BlizzCon. I mean there's lots of rumors around. We'll see. Looking forward to that for sure. Um and I think yeah, just experimenting with new builds, um experimenting with all the different characters. The only thing that's really limiting me is the amount of character slots I have. So I probably have to delete my eternal level hundreds. We'll, we'll see. I'm still hoping to get mustache space at, at some point in the game. Um but yeah, um, I think the season has longevity uh, for sure because uh, there's just so many different builds, especially with the Vampiric Powers. There's a couple more options here to try out. Um, but yeah, then maybe some D3, maybe some Diablo 2 again. Just stay in the Diablo franchise. Looking forward to that. Yeah, I think um, I think if if I wasn't a content creator, at this point, I, I'm I'm pretty much done with the season journey. I think I have like one or two more things to do. Um, I, I would pretty much be done if I if I if I wasn't like super into Diablo. Like this is my this is my game. This is my franchise. Um, but a I'm a content creator, and a this is my game. This is like my main game. So because of those uh, things, I'll be here the whole season. Um, I think uh, easily this is a great season to level and try every single class, uh, try a bunch of different builds. I haven't played Barb since launch, so I want to get back into Barb and play that upheaval that. What, dude? Uh, man, I, I I miss I miss the upheaval. So um, I want to get back into uh, upheaval. Um, there's a bunch of really great changes to uh, necromancer and uh, necromancer builds. Um, there's a whole bunch of theory crafted builds there that are, are super super interesting that just really weren't very viable last season. So uh, yeah, I think uh, Diablo Four for the whole season will be pretty interesting um, for me, even all the way to the end. Um, and then, of course, uh, yeah, we have no idea what's coming at BlizzCon. So there there may be tons and tons of interesting things uh, this time around. Yeah, and I just remember, like, especially if we get some patches in the middle, like we get the target dummy, the DPS meter gives us a whole another like, tools to play with, to, to compare builds, to check actually how much damage we're dealing, um, and to prepare, like, for getting the, the leaderboards in, in, in Season 3 soon. So we can, like, compare builds, get a good grasp on, like, every build in the game and where they roughly stand in comparison to each other. And yeah, it if, just it never gets boring, I think. If if Diablo Four was an anime, this would be the training arc. Uh and we're all we're all getting ready for season three and the and the leaderboards. <laughs> Guys, I'm actually fun. incredibly right now surprised to hear this from you because um I have a feeling looking at your streams, looking at your speed, how you are completing all of those challenges, like day three, Duriel, day one, Duriel done. Like, I don't know, Uber Lilith dead even before the season has started. I don't know. I, like, in, just insane speed. And I had a feeling asking this question. I thought right now, Mox is telling me that two days I'm out. I'm like, I don't know. I'm going, going away from here. Uh, that's why this is so, don't you think this is kind of so controversial? They made the game easier. But they made the game at the same time more fun. It's like more, with this diversity, with, right now we don't have the pressure of the leaderboard, 
And we don't have this, oh, this build is the strongest, I'm playing only this build, and everyone in the leaderboard is playing only this build. We have this freedom of trying absolutely all the different things. And this is, uh, I totally understand that, yeah, that's not going to work forever. It's going to work maybe for one season, two months. Uh, season three, we need something, we need a goal, we need something to to grind for, we need some, the place where we will be we will be using those uber uniques. But now... It is crazy, but all the changes to the XP make it faster, make it easier, make... Even for a lot of people, I'm pretty sure Uber Lilith was this insane goal to kill, but she was unbeatable. It, only if you have this build, one of those couple of builds that were, like, absolutely... And you need to... Not just... That wasn't like you had your build and that's it. You're walking in and you are doing one step and you're one-shotting her. No, you needed to learn the mechanic. You needed to learn the build, you need to place yourself perfectly, or you need to have the specific stats, and only like this you were able to kill her. Right now it's not the case. Right now a bunch of different things can do this. For a lot of people that will be absolutely a great experience this season. Yeah, 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 I can do her, I can finally defeat her with my build. Not with the one that I checked on Max Roll, I checked Rob's, I checked Moxie's videos, the build that I made myself, for example. Maybe people also will be obviously checking your bills. So this is, we have a really weird season, guys. What do you think? And uh, now, who wants can answer this question. Who wants like, can also think about what I said. Ay, ay, ay. Um, yeah, I, I, think, um, I think one of the great things about this season is that the dev team's philosophy has changed significantly in the sense that previously... Essentially, the game they had built was a campaign and then a couple of extra features sprinkled on, on top of it. And what that means is that really they have a good 1 to 50 experience, and then they took all the rest of the content and stretched it out over the rest of the experience. So what it feels like they've done with Season 2 is they added some new content, right? They have these new bosses. They went back and they fixed a lot of quality of life, life issues. And then they just squashed the game into the box that they have already built, which is sort of like that early game content, right? So all of the content, if you consider, if you consider the content that we have in the game now as early game content or um, even like mid game content and not really in game content, then it makes a lot of sense to me. That strategy makes a lot of sense. And then if later, like say season three, season four, uh, or like an expansion or like whatever they decide to do with the game from here, um, then we get more end game content that on top of what we have now, then that starts making a lot more sense. Um, and uh, and the game starts getting a lot more longevity. And then the instead of trying to take, you know, um, this like early game experience and like stretch it out over such a long period of time, um, which is why why I think a lot of people felt pretty bad. This just wasn't a lot to do previously. Yeah. I mean, I really hope some of the um, season mechanics that we have right now, like the blood towers, they can go like into the core game just to add some of that uh, longevity right there. I feel that it would be like a really nice addition in general. Yeah, I agree. Adding, adding, and adding. Uh, like for example, Varshan being part of last season and now making a return. As, as I think, as they keep building on the game, that's going to just get better and better and like these new bosses are very very good first up they're still not everything that we need uh, there's a lot more space past them uh, hopefully for more challenging content um but uh i've been enjoying it and this season part of like the actual like season vampiric powers i'm enjoying more than i was enjoying the hearts obviously like the Barber Heart was crazy. You just slap that on on any build and you just go. Um, and that was really fun power fantasy. But there's a lot more like tweaking and things to do with the different vampiric powers um, that you can like build around. And, and that part of it uh, is more interesting in the season. Uh, one, because they're generic. And two, because uh, there's so many different ways to build them. Like I just started using a basic attack build uh, with the powers that give you attack speed and that basic attack damage. And that's crazy. Uh, I popped into Ziz's stream yesterday and he was doing a Hemomancy build where he was just fully spec to like make Hemomancy do as much damage as possible, which I didn't think was going to be a thing. Um, and so the new activities plus the build diversity from the damage formula plus the like 
uh, build diversity from the powers, uh, I think we got a much better season. That's absolutely. Um, and to, like you know, to summarize <laughs> all of this, uh, wonderful people. You remember your rating in the beginning of this podcast? We got, we gave the game. You gave the game like the seven, seven and a half, seven. Tell me, what should we add right now? Obviously, they're adding the leaderboard. Okay, we, we know this, but. Besides that, what should they add to the game to make it a 10 and that we will all forget Path of Exile and we will stay in Diablo forever? <laughs> what should it be, Rob? If you have if you have the idea what should drop there, then give it yeah. to us. I said this a lot. I mean, it's obviously like what I mentioned before, like adding longevity, for example, to uh, like the leveling process, just making the last bits of levels very small power, but like long, really long to, to get like 100 plus hours of, of play. And then maybe adding like new game modes. I always give this, give this example of um, Last Epoch has an arena mode, it's called. Like you basically are in, in, a, in a fixed uh, position and there's uh, ever harder getting like monster waves coming at you. And uh, you just need to go as deep as possible, and there's no there's no cap. This is like one thing, like a, a trial, like to really prove like the power of your build and and your character, and you can just go as as deep as you want. And then there's different strategies because of the layout, like you can how you position your character, and and all these like s small things. And you could maybe do it solo, or you could do it in a group, however you want. And just adding like more of these like exciting like and also like art at, at the high end end game activities there and yeah with the leaderboards obviously there's going to be an entire new system we don't know what that is but just more of you know like hell tides or the the blood stuff like more of that and uh yeah make it make it scale make it scale long and and large and uh it could be a really nice thing yeah i would say one of the biggest problems with the game uh so first of all they could just go to last epoch and start stealing stuff and and they they should do and that. Inspiration. There, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's called yeah. inspiration, please. In, 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 inspiration. Yes. Um, they they should do that because Last Epoch has many many good ideas. Um, I think their loot filter is a, is a good one. Uh, if Blizzard wants to steal that, that that'd be great. Um, so, uh, I think actually the biggest problem with the game now that they fixed a lot of these quality of life issues is still the dungeons. Um, the dungeons still feel uh pretty. Pretty pretty cookie cutter. There's usually only a couple layouts, a couple different directions that you can go. Um, there's either a boss at the end or not a boss. The objectives are usually unfun, um, and uh, they have done a little bit of that this season. I I would say it's it it doesn't go far enough. Um, but what what's fun about let's say like Goa Ruins? Um, what's fun about Goa Ruins is that you know where the boss is. It's always like on the top right hand side, which is kind of annoying. I wish it was like more or random, but you know where the boss is. And what you can do is you can travel to the boss and you can choose the monsters that you want to fight. So typically I look for a big pack of monsters that has elites in it. And then I try to group them all together and blow them all up and then go to the next pack, right? So that makes the gameplay more dynamic. Even if you run the dungeon a hundred times, you don't know exactly how you're gonna group the monsters up or which rooms are gonna be uh, the best. So having more dungeons that are like that, where they're a little bit less unpredict, a uh, little little more unpredictable, and uh, a little bit more interesting, as opposed to like go free the five prisoners, um, uh, I think would go a long way towards making uh, the game a lot more interesting. Uh, and then all of the like sort of like in-game content, like Rob talked about, is stuff that you could layer in on top of that. Yeah, I agree with everything that's been said. Just more endgame activities. I really do agree with the the point on the dungeons. One thing that I did like that I think they could take some inspiration from is they have like the nightmare dungeons where you're getting the resources to fight. I forget his name, but like the ice boss. Um, ice and the ice. yeah, and <laughs> uh, you can get like drops and then kind of craft this new sigil that brings you to this boss fight and the dungeon that leads up to that it's just like you kind of just can like walk past them like if we could get some sort of more like challenging end game dungeons that are like set dungeons or things that are a little bit longer of an experience 
Um, maybe they could have some mechanics in them, not anything that's like, oh, you need like players <laughs> or players like to like do this mechanic, but just things that you could like, oh, I just did a nightmare dungeon and I got this sigil to drop or I have this resource and now I can craft this like this super nightmare dungeon and run that and I'm going to get like five, ten levels of my glyph if I can complete it and and it's going to be more challenging. The, I'll spend longer time in there. Just more activities to the end game uh, to test our builds, test our powers, and and take the crazy power. Like one thing that I noticed this season that is very different than last season is we are getting so much like max item power loot, like nine twenty fives filling up everything. Lot, versus in lot. prior seasons, it's like oh, I just got this weapon that's like. 10 item power higher um and, and there was a little bit more progression to getting to those higher things uh the changes with like getting guaranteed uh item powers higher and higher as you push is really good but at the same time it's just kind of blown out of the water because you just get guaranteed 925s uh relatively easily so uh, more changes there would also be very nice yeah, in general, I think they can change still a lot or optimize a lot with the itemization system like making uh white items, blue items, like useful in some way, maybe as a base for like, a crafting system they could introduce later or having like what is like very fan favorite in, in the Diablo franchise is the rune words. Like we have them in Diablo 2, maybe the white item is like the base and you, you add some modifiers to it or you can like build your own items in some way and then craft on them and something. Um, I think that would just give the game so much more depth and, and build your character and so many more like personalized options. I really, really, uh, um, I actually kind of hope that, yeah, yeah, that they will add something, maybe sets, maybe rune words, maybe some some other way how to, what to do with your items and the character, absolutely. Uh, but sometimes I also think that it's kind of good that they release the game without those options. They will add them, hopefully sooner than later. But um, why good? Because actually when you just, when we were just starting playing the game and we saw all of this 10,000 damage over time, burning damage, pyromancy skill damage, damage to the burning enemies, damage over, over time. I am right now choosing for my incinerate uh, sorceress what is more important, <laughs> what, is, uh, what is actually dealing with something. It actually was really, really overwhelming. All the stats, all the information, all the new damage multipliers, vulnerable damage, all of those kind of things. and. It's good in the beginning that you don't have like everything that they're not dropping on you absolutely everything. In the beginning, you're kind of getting used to the new system. But right now, clearly would be cool if we would have more, if we would have the new way, how to put it all together or something, something to experiment with, something, how to, what, what you're chasing for your items. It's kind of, they are, no, it's not quite. They're going in this direction that each time, with if so far season one, we needed the gear with the correct socket. Now we need the gear with the correct packs, and we need to do the packs, adjust the packs somehow. So we do. We're changing the gear in some way. We're using the gear somehow, but this is like not enough. It feels like it's not enough. There should be more varieties. There should be more options for the gear. One other thing to add on top mm -hmm. of that would be, I really do hope, like, I know people are very excited for a potential of a new character, but it'd be really cool to see some skill tree expansions um, where we're getting more nodes in the tree for different ways to play the different skills, because some skills, like, actually have some diversity, and, like, you can play... Uh, like whirlwind with bleed whirlwind you can go the like mace whirlwind and and there's like diversity there and then there's some other skills where it's just like you are always playing this ability this way and that's just because there's just such an imbalance between the like two paths and only having two paths for a skill is obviously going to hurt build diversity in comparison to like even diablo 3 there was like a bunch of different like runes to pick for your skill and different ways to play versus basically just two 
Yeah, I feel this could potentially be something that sets could focus on because I didn't like the way in D3, you know, like you put on your set because you mentioned it earlier. And like in D3, you get your 6 piece set and you get like 10,000% more damage to like one skill or something. I think that's like not the best design decision. And if, if, it, if the set would just modify like the skill like a little bit, but like not, not giving it a multiplier, but giving it like a new mechanic or something special, like with the whirlwinds, like different weapon usages or like this one is bleed, this one is more focused on direct damage. Something like that, and then like having more of these like two or three piece bonuses, so you're not like so pigeonholed into like full six committing to six pieces. Just having like this more like the if you guys know D three like the crimson sets or the all kill sets of D three. I think like those little additions would be uh, would be a great uh, stuff to have on sets. Yeah, yeah, I agree absolutely. No, no, when I'm saying sets, I don't mean Diablo three sets like full because effectively you in Diablo three. Uh, you just choosing a set, and it's six or seven pieces of your. You have thirteen items yeah. in total on a character, and immediately the decision was made. You are making one decision for a set, and you are closing like six, six pieces of your full setup. So all the other items doesn't matter at all. In Diablo Four, we have ten pieces on a adequate character, and unfortunately more pieces on barbarian and uh it's anyway like the full the full set will steal so much from it from itemization but two pieces of three pieces sets that would be that again that's a lot of build diversity that would be really really fun Ooh, guys thank you thank you so much i don't want to torture you uh much longer I'm always giving in the end, uh, if you want to add something, if we didn't touch something that you really would love to discuss with us or whatever, if you want to just say something, then please do this. You have a moment for this. Everyone's thinking. Most of the things uh, <laughs> I wanted to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I think this was... Uh... This was great. And uh, did did any of you get any of the um, Uber Uniques yet? Or I have the uh, Stelig amulet, which I'm very much excited to try on the basic attack build. It's the amulet that instead of taking damage to your health, you take damage to your resource um, per like percentage that you would lose, and then go on like Druid and grab the things where your basic skills generate more spirit plus Crone staff. Just do basic attack like crazy. I'm at like 200% basic attack speed right now. I'm um, very, very excited to try that. Yeah, I like that. You could like potentially be like immortal with that again. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and we'll see like how the injured damage reduction with that works. I think it's a really great synergy, especially on, on Druid with that. And uh, I want to try the grandfather that I found, but I'm like a bit frustrated with that because obviously like the crit damage that it gives now is just additive to everything. So... Well, we'll see, but uh, I have the Ring of the Starless Sky again, and with that one I want to try Bone Spear because it's going to be 40% resource reduction. Looking forward to that. There are a couple of mechanics where you can take things like Vulnerable, uh, Crit, and Overpower, and you can like smuggle those mechanics into like another mechanic. A good example of that is um, Necromancer's uh, uh, redesigned Shadow Blight, and that Shadow Blight now benefits from your Shadow Damage over time. So like my Shadow Damage over time uh, multiplier to Shadow Blight is like 200% right now, which is pretty pretty nuts. Uh, so Shadow Blight actually does a ton of damage, even though I am stacking Shadow Damage over time. And then Shadow Blight itself can crit, uh, and it can overpower and stuff. So you essentially like are smuggling like damage over time, which can't crit or overpower, into a mechanic that can crit or overpower. Um, and you can do like really interesting things with that. Uh, I'm Obviously, SSF life, so if I get an Uber Unique this season, um, I mean, I think eventually I will get one, but I, I'm not sure I'll get the ones that I want. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that, that, I'm going to be playing a lot of Helltide, I think. <laughs> which one would you be most excited for? Like, which one would you, like, if you could uh, choose which one you get? Uh, so right now, actually, the thing I, I, I'm looking for the most is not an Uber un Unique at all. It's um, uh, the new Ring of Zafal. Uh, because oh, yeah. uh, that there's there's some really potential high um, damage uh, chance for that. Um, I do want to do Selig. Uh, Selig would be really great on Necromancer because it has the Necromancer has a lot of mechanics that scale with maximum essence. 
Um, we do know that Selig, by the way, um, we were talking about the damage equation there for a second. Uh, Selig gets hit after your barrier. So like, uh, it, if you got hit with like a really big attack, all of your barrier would go down first, and then all of your essence would go down, and then your health would go down afterwards. Um, so uh, one interaction that would be worth testing there is like, if getting hit while you have Selig on counts as like a fortified hit, because I'm not sure it will be. Uh, so that uh, it, it should, I, I don't know. But there's like a lot of interesting mechanics with Selig that uh, the other Uber Uniques maybe don't have um, that uh, will be interesting and like trying to figure out and or exploit. Which Uber Unique would you be most excited for, Anna, if you, if you could maybe find one? I will uh, maybe find one. I will find my Shako. I will find it's the my spirit. Shako. <laughs> then I will find Grandfather and, and I will salvage it. I promise chat that if I will ever find <laughs> Grandfather in this game, I will salvage it. Um, I will find Shako. It's plus four to all skills. And I will find the new one, Flame. I don't remember how it's called. It's not the Uber one. It's a regular one. Flame something for the sorceress. Also dropping from Duriel. It's the one that's giving plus five to incinerate. Plus five to incinerate. So five Throw here, four all. from Shako. I am I am destroying everything with incinerate. This will be it will be working. No, I mean it's working already, but oh my gosh, I will have the most powerful incinerate build that there is. I will be staying there with a the flamethrower and killing absolutely everyone. That's gonna be amazing. That is the plan. Sounds great. <laughs> Boxer, which one do you need? Um, like, obviously Shaco would be really cool, but I really want to try a, like, full poison druid build uh, with the Blurred Beast, which was already crazy. Plus, we've got the, like, X-Falls with the poison explosions, and then Andariel's on top of that uh, to go, like, a non-rampaging um, non beast druid build with just all the poison explosions that that could provide on top of the X-Falls plus Blurred Beast could be ridiculous. Um, so that's the one that I would like want to like play with builds the most. Um, but yeah, just haven't gotten it yet. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Wonderful people. Once again, thank you for joining. Thank you for this conversation. We are taking the notes how to level, where to go, and what to do. Uh, so uh, that was really, really awesome. Guys, uh, beautiful chat. Please leave your comments. How did you like it? You can find my beautiful guests on Twitch, on YouTube. We're going to put all the links also. I'm going to, in a second, drop all the links uh, in the description. And uh, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful evening or day or night. Whatever it is for you. <laughs> Thanks for hosting, Anna. Thank you. Have a good one. Thanks for the nice talk. Good luck on getting your super uniques, everybody. Take care. <laughs> Thank you. Peace. Thanks for having Gigi. me.